All right, guys, hey, welcome back. Today we are talking accessories, everything you need for accessories. Now, I know a lot of you guys have asked me, Cody, what accessories do you use? And I haven't made an accessories video because I don't think YouTube needs just another, hey, look what I spent my money on video. What I wanted to do was wait until I did 5,000 or I put 5,000 miles on my car to show you guys how well these accessories held up to see if I actually can recommend them or not. So let's get into it. All right, guys, the first accessory I want to talk to you guys about is actually not a car accessory. It's more just a Tesla accessory, and that is a card holder. So this one's actually called the 7 Sparta Key Card Holder. It's $10.99 on Amazon. And by the way, every product I talked about today will be linked down in the description below if you want to check it out. None of the products that I'm going to be doing in this video right now are sponsored. I had to pay for all these products. So um, just in case you're wondering... I paid for all of these. Obviously, a lot of the products I'm going to do on the channel, I didn't, but you'll always know that ahead of time. Now, back to the card. So, these are actually really nice. I mean, they're rubber, and they feel really good in your hands. got a really cool design right there on it. And on the back side, they actually, the card itself, the Tesla uh, name right on it comes right through. Um, so, you can see it right there, which is kind of cool. So, you take the card, and it slides right in there. Then, you clip this on afterwards, and the car can't card can't come out. I mean, you can really push hard on here on this spot to get it out by pushing and sliding, um, but it takes quite a bit of effort. And so why do you get something like this? You get something like this because you're using valet a lot and you don't want to just hand someone your card. So you put it in something like this. The other thing is when you hand something to a valet, what do they do? They go out there and attach a little tag to it. And then that tag is what's attached to your tag, which you know you hand your valet. But if you just give them a card, they're going to have to, I don't know, tape it to the card or something. Um, so this is really nice because they can just kind of clip their little tag right to this and then you don't really have to worry about it. The only downside that I, I see to it is that there's no place to really put your name and your contact information in case it gets separated somehow. Every Tesla key looks like every other key. So it just is kind of nice if there was somewhere to put your identification, but I'm sure you guys can come up with some kind of solutions for that. They are washable, so when they start to get weird junk on them, you can quickly just, you know, scrub them real quick and uh, make it just fine. So would I recommend this one? Absolutely, hands down, a must-have. All right, guys, now this next one is kind of a cool little accessory that I bought for outside of my car, and it's only about $19, and it is the BMZX uh, charging cable organizer, I think is what it's called. And it's found on Amazon. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, easy to get a hold of this. But what's neat about it is that it's light, it's easy to install. I mean, watch this. All that happens with the install is you just have these two little screws here. You just kind of screw it into your wall, preferably on a stud, although it's not holding much weight. This is real simple. Um, it's just kind of a little tiny slider lines there. And so it just kind of goes right on there, nice and firm, tight like that. Then all you do, obviously put your cord back on and then you can either loop this around like that, like a lot of people do, or you can plug it in there. They give you a neat little hole kind of plug it in there and you're good to go. So do I recommend this one? Yeah, keep your stuff off the ground. This stuff's expensive. I think this thing's a couple hundred dollars or more to replace. So you don't want to just leave it on the ground or weather and whatever else can get to it. Mine's right by my lawnmower. So, you know, I really don't want to smash it on the ground or run over it. So just a good little thing to keep everything organized for your cool Tesla. Okay, now I have to apologize on this next accessory because I know my camera's a little bit crooked here, but, but I want to get a good shot of what's going on here. So you've got your center console here. And when you open this up, when you just get your car, obviously right here you have your chargers here for your phone. You press this one and it opens up to just a great big canvas. It's like a canyon, like the Grand Canyon. And look down here. I mean, I got my wires, my ports. We'll go through what these are in a minute. It's just a big hole. You really would never want to put something like sunglasses or anything way down in there. So the solution for this is something called JDM Car Flocked Center Console Organizer. And this tray right here is really great because if you look at it here, it feels like it's like microfiber and it just slits, slides right in there so nicely and snug. Look at that. I mean, that is firm. That is like not going anywhere. And I bought this thing because it has so many good reviews. I mean, you can put all kinds of good stuff in here. You can take your garage door remote, put it in here. I could put my key in here temporarily. You can put some coins down inside this deal right here. Um, and it's just enough stuff in there. Uh, I mean, I know that people often put, you know, their sunglasses right there. It's actually got a really great spot for sunglasses right there. Um, if you're one of those Banaka users, like, you know, some weird people are, you can take this and, you know, put that in there as well. And it folds up nice. I mean, you actually got quite a bit of spot uh, room above that. Remember, this thing just goes and locks into the top of this. So you actually have quite a bit of gap um, above this to put some 
you know, useful items in there. You can put change down here in this spot. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's a really great way to actually have some kind of organization so stuff not just piled inside that console. All right, so would I recommend that product? Absolutely. You gotta have some way of organizing all that chaos down there. And this is what I found was the cheapest, best way to do it, coming in at only uh, $18.79 before tax on Amazon. Get it in a couple days, yeah. Okay, so next are the center console liners. Now, we talked about the new center console I added, but watch what I did to the rest of the car where the liners are, because one thing that you find when you got like cup holders and stuff like you have, is the line you're in, inside of these cup holders can just get nasty. I mean, you almost have to get like a uh, something sharp, like a screwdriver or a, or some kind of a little toothpick or something to scratch the corners out because of all the gunk that can get inside those things. So the accessory kit that I ended up buying had a whole bunch of stuff like this. Take a look at that. And it's really neat because you actually have them for all the different spots inside your car. You just take them and lay it right down inside just like that. And I got the white ones. I think there's five different colors. They kind of match my seats and everything. And it's great. Uh, you can get all kinds of stuff on them. There's a little ledge um, on the edge of them there. I don't know if you can see that really well. Um, and it catches any water or any dust or anything that would normally just spill over. Uh, and it's really grippy right here too. So they work really well. And also like with these, with the other sides, you, you got them all for all the different cubbies. So you got the little bit thicker one here. You got a thinner one that fits right there. Also, when you lift this out, you also have them down here. So you got these big uh, spots down here that are down inside that rear console, as well as down here in the front one with all your wires. I mean, these things are really just like floor mats for your cars or your house. At $14.95 on Amazon, it's a pretty easy way to protect your cup holder and save you a bunch of grief when you're cleaning your car. So yes, I recommend them. Okay, so the next one is the center console EV wraps. And one thing you will notice if you're a new Tesla owner very quickly, is that this part of your car attracts fingerprints like none other. In fact, if you're gonna pick one accessory to get right away, this is the one I would pick. The one I bought was the EV wrap and it came in at $29.99 before tax on Amazon. And it just did a fantastic job. It was easy to install. I would say though on parts like this though where the cup holders were there, uh, these I did try a couple different times to get it right. But the good news is it allows you to have quite a bit of forgiveness um, as you're as you're putting this on so you can take it back off again and put it back on You just got to kind of follow the instructions these ones here were really simple to do You just kind of lay it on starting at the top and rub it way all the way down and then you just kind of fold the excess here That's one thing that's kind of nice is that you don't have to worry about any uh, Having to cut any parts off and screwing that up this one same kind of thing really easy You can see on here where I just kind of rolled it over again really easy So the excess just comes and wraps around and it keeps it real nice. But again, yeah, this one, just because of the little edges around there was a little bit tricky. But the thing is, is that it, it really helps prevent fingerprints. You do get some, like you can see when I press on here, it does, it does leave some fingerprints, but nothing like without it. The other thing is too, is that the material that is on this thing, when you first buy the car, it's so shiny. And you go like this, you would see scratch marks. It take you go like this with your nail, you would see a scratch marks. Where this has held up well. I mean, I've got over 5,000 miles on this and you can see I have tiny little microscopic marks on here, uh, but it's really no big deal. All I do to clean this thing, uh, each time I clean my car, is I just take a white one or a wet one and just wipe it real quick and it just, just like that, no big deal. So now they do come in like matte black or carbon fiber and there's a lot of different other colors you can choose from. So this is just what I went with because I like the slick look with my white seats and white trim. But these are a must have. You guys won't regret getting this one for the cost, it's not bad. Plus insulation is great because they have a video that really walks you through step by step. What I would recommend you did, which is what I did, was bring your, your phone out to your car with it on YouTube ready to go. Watch a little bit of the instructions. Uh, go right down and do it. Go back to the instructions. Go back and forth. Take your time. Uh, bring out a bottle of water, maybe a couple of fishy crackers. Make sure that you're, you're, you're in a good frame of mind because you don't want to get frustrated with this. You stare at this all the time. And so just, just take your time and it works really well. So do I recommend this? Uh, yes. Hands down, yes. Okay, guys, next one is the screen protector. This bad boy is the thing you stare at more than anything else inside your car. Hope, other than hopefully the windshield. I mean, hopefully you're looking out there more than you're looking at here. That's kind of the idea. I ended up buying one off Amazon for $15.99. I figure for that price, why not? It claims that it, it helps you know, with fingerprint smudges. You can still see some fingerprint smudges on here for sure. It does not eliminate them by any means, but it is a slight bit better. 
Um, you know, in terms of it fitting well, they claim that it's going to fit really well. It does. It, it definitely is not perfect on my car, but that's because of the installer, not because of the product. It went on really, really easily. Just be really careful when you put them on that you don't bend it um, because they will just like snap. They are very easy to clean and they do add the extra level of protection, which is great. And the thing is with the one I got here, which will be in the link down below, is that it doesn't take away your shine. It doesn't look like you're looking at some kind of like a, a screen protector or a matte like finish or anything. It's, it's, it's a very crisp, clear uh, cover. I don't even notice I have it on, to be honest with you. So would I recommend getting a screen protector for your car? I think you probably should, just like you probably should for your phone. I don't have one on my phone, but I do have one on my car because, I don't know, I just felt like for the price, you know, why not? I know a lot of people think you don't need one on the screen. I would recommend it because you're touching it constantly. Things can hit it. And it's an expensive piece in your car. I think there are a couple thousand dollars to replace the screen or at least 1500 from what I've heard. And anything you can do to protect it, why not do it? So would I recommend it? Yes. There are ones out there that claim to do better in terms of fingerprints, but I think you lose a little bit of that shine when you go that route. So this screen protector worked really well. So yes, I do recommend getting a screen protector. If you've got the money you're, and you're looking for ways to protect your car, this is a good one. The EV wraps first, but screen protector will be right there behind it. So on this next one now, we're gonna talk about a USB hub that I use and I, I don't know, I just didn't go very expensive on this one and it's really done the job, but I'll show you which one I used. So the USB hub that I'm using in here is the Sabrent, or however you say that, USB hub. And it's got four ports on it. And you can see here I have my phone charger and then I have the two uh, cords here that go to charging my actual iPhones up top here. And then we have my little flash drive that I use for my sentry mode. And then what it does is allows you to open up, and I know it's gonna be kind of dark in here, guys. See, now what you got in here is your two USB ports that are way down there. It, what it does is it leaves one open over here uh, that you can plug something else into. So I have it right here in this port. Um, that's the cord that charges my GoPro. Uh, so you've got all kinds of great stuff in there. So you got, you got this port that goes to the hub. This port goes to something else. And so by doing that, you end up getting yourself uh, a total of five USB ports. It's not pretty, it's a disaster down here. I mean, look at this, I got cords going everywhere. This thing just makes it even worse, but you know what? I'm barely ever in there, so it's really not that big a deal. So for something like this, a nice little USB port, it's gonna cost you $7.99 on Amazon. And the neat thing is about this, and this is gonna be the selling point for you guys, when you press these buttons, these lights light up. So yes, if you're looking for a cheap way to go about the USB port and you don't mind all the mess and disaster that's involved down there, it's a good way to go. All right, now you've already seen the flash drive that was plugged into my hub just a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, but let's take a closer look at that because that is a accessory we need to cover. Now, I already made a video about which one of these I use and it, it kind of sucked, but I can put it up here in the link if you want to look at it because there's a bunch of different types of accessories. Now, as you know, when using sentry mode in your car, you need to record it to something so you can look back at the video. And if you want to be able to tap Tesla cam little button at the top there and record a saved video that, that you like, that something happened out there, you know how it records the last 10 minutes, you need to have a little flash drive in your car to be able to do that. And you got to make sure it's programmed where it says Tesla cam, make, make a folder for that inside the file um, on the card which we could talk about another time but you've got to make sure you got one that works for you and your style if you like to go out and just plug it in your computer uh, this is kind of overkill for that a lot cheaper ones would probably work um, you know if you want to use a Wi-Fi one which I don't necessarily recommend I had a lot of lag with those um, there is solutions for that out there as well I chose this one because I'm a big fan of the app uh, called Century View and that Century View app allows you to view your videos right on the spot. What makes this one unique is the ability to plug it directly into your iPhone. So if you look at this thing here, it's got that little tiny spot, that little port that the iPhone takes. So all you have to do is take your iPhone and then you just take this thing and you just kind of bend it up a little bit and it just pops like that right into your phone. You can see it works really, really well. Then you can pull it straight up onto your phone and view footage within minutes of it actually happening, which is really great. Now, I would recommend getting at least 64 gigs. I mean, it uses that up still in about a week, week and a half, but I wouldn't go any less than that. You can obviously go a lot bigger than that, but this has been plenty good for me. Right from that Century View app, you can go in and remove and delete everything on the card really easily. You don't have to take it back to your computer and all the annoying stuff involved with all that. So it's really easy to do. So this is that, that's the one 
I recommend. This one comes in at $33.50. I'll link it down in the description below too. You guys go check it out. It's a really good option. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at here is something called the Bassinor Back Kick Covers. And they come in at $29.99 on Amazon. And to be honest, the fit is top notch. I mean, they hug just perfectly on both sides of the car. They don't go past, so you can't really see them from the front. On the top here, they have a nice cubby, which is really nice to have down there for the kids to stick all their nasty stuff in. And then on the very top here, the installation is just really easy. They just have these little clips here, and they just kind of snap on the top. And you can see they come off sometimes, but if they do, if the kids kick them off or whatever, they're really easy. All you do is just clip them right back on. They go right back there. And they just they just make it really, really easy to deal with. Now, they're, they're made from this nice material. I think it's a form of leather. Um, but it gets really muddy with the kids kicking it and stuff all the time. But that's not that much of an issue because if you just take a wet one and just wipe it over it, I mean, this is what they look like right now after 5,000 miles of use. I mean, they really look great. If there is one downside to them, and it might just be me as well, these clips underneath, they just... I don't know. They don't seem to stay on very well. It seems like a couple times a week I have to go back in and, and re-clip them to the parts underneath the car. But that's not that big of a deal because it's really easy to do. And I suppose if I just moved them even further up, because they are elastic, found something up there further, it would just tighten them even more and they just stay on better. And really here's the other thing. I've tried multiple other versions of these back seat covers and there's really nothing like these ones. All the other ones just look like a towel over the back of the seat, just a great big rectangle. But as you can see with these, they look very, very, very good. So what I recommend them for the price? Oh, absolutely, it's a no brainer. Absolutely get them. So the next item on the list is the door sill protectors. Coming in at $20, they are a hit and miss in terms of do you need them or not. I'd actually be curious to see from you guys if you actually do after years of having this car getting in and out, in and out, have you actually ever had scratches and issues with that nice Model 3 door sill entryway there? Is it all scratched up? One thing that's kind of nice about these though is that without the protector on them, if you were to get a scratch, uh, you know, you're gonna just, it's gonna stay a scratch. You put a line through it, you know, on this stuff, it's kind of soft without these pads on them. You know, it's gonna stay a scratch there, but with these, they're self-healing. So what that means is that if you get a scratch on here, it's gonna sort of just absorb the scratch. Bigger ones, it's gonna still show. You can see on mine here, I've got some residue from soap that I use, but overall, they've done a great job. They don't lose the shine, if that's what you're worried about. They install really, really easily. They basically just went on and like, I probably put both sides on in just two, three minutes, but it looks nice and it's just one more thing you can do to protect your car. So, you know, do I recommend it? Yeah, if you got extra money to burn and you want to, go for it, it's 20 bucks. And uh, it's just another way to take care of your car. All right, now there's two more accessories to go here and they're the two that I get asked about probably more than anything, and that is floor mats. So the ones I went with are the Bogue RV floor mats and they come in at $129.98. You can buy them on Amazon and the reason I went with these ones are for very specific reasons. First thing is you really want to have this nice extra piece up here for your foot. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know, maybe not, maybe it's just me, but I always have my foot resting on here. And then you can see how high it goes all the way up there in the back as well. And so these are really great because they come up here on the sides as well. I mean, you look at this. These things have probably a good four inches there all along, front and back, that they come up on the car. Look at that. So you can literally get in with mud and water all over your shoes and ice and as it melts it's going to stay puddled up right in here and not get all over your nice carpet underneath there because you don't want to have all that carpet getting ruined by this. Another thing that's really critical about these floor mats is when you look at the way that these lines all run through here, you want to make sure you're getting a pattern that's going to keep your foot from sliding as much as possible. Because see the problem is when you put your foot on here like this, your ten, it's a tendency to want your foot to kind of keep sliding when you have floor mats on, and that's really annoying. So you find yourself just constantly sliding. But with these ones, because they have these grips right there, I mean, look at, look at those right there. You can see they're running horizontal, and that makes it really nice because your heel kind of clicks right into that and uh, keeps it so you can control your pedals just fine, and uh, it's just no big deal there. You got the accelerator right there, the gat and the brake, and they all fit really nice right there on your foot. And that is actually a really big deal. I will tell you this though, that my wife is five foot four and she finds that these are actually 
that actually doesn't work for her. She's constantly sliding, having to reset her foot. You don't have these problems with carpet ones, but you do have this with rubber floor mats. Still totally worth every single penny, especially when you see how dirty they get. Um, but just something to be aware of. I'm six foot one and my feet are size 13 feet, so they fit really, really well. And so they fit, it fits really, really well with my style. Of course, they are on both sides and they go really, really high up there, which is nice. Passenger side has the big full uh, walls on it as well. Here's something I will point out though. When I got these, uh, no matter where I put them, they fit perfectly, molded perfectly everywhere. And over the 5,000 miles I've ran them, I've noticed that they've become, it's become a lot more sloppy in here. There's been a lot more room. And I think these things have kind of warped a little bit, maybe. Um, there's just a little bit more gaps, um, like up in here, they never used to be any. I'm not complaining. I can imagine every single one of them is gonna do that as they get worn in. And it's certainly not enough to really be noticeable, but it's just one thing I did notice is that they were just an amazing fit at first, and they're still quite amazing, uh, but they definitely have loosened up a little bit. In the back, it's much the same. They go in very, very well. It is very easy to get these things in, and look at that design. Look how cool that looks. These even go deep under the seat. It's gonna keep your carpet safe. Also in the back, you can see they do have the big ledges as well, and those go along the sides as well as all along the back. So there's a lot of different floor mats you can choose from on there. These ones come from Amazon, they got good reviews. I really like them, they've done very well for me. They've caught everything, and they're really easy to clean too. All you gotta do is just throw them on your driveway after you're washing your car, spray them off, scrub them down with your scrubber, uh, rinse them off again, and then when they dry, throw them back in your car and they look brand new. Again, I got 5,000 miles on these, and they're just done a fantastic job. So would I recommend them? Yes. So this next one is really important, especially if you live in like really rainy, wet climates, and that is the trunk liner. And the one I got is the Hikotor Cargo Mat Liner, and it is $58.98 on Amazon, and I have loved it, and here's why. Just like the others, look how well this thing fits inside of your Tesla trunk. It's got everything you need. Lots of space. It says Model 3 right there, which is kind of cool. It's nice hard rubber, but you can easily get it out. It actually has bend spots on the side like this for getting it in and out of your car. And it just, it just fits so well. And you know, here's the problem with the mat, if there ever actually was one, and that is that you have that lower kind of trunk down underneath here. And so if you ever need to get it, it's not actually that bad. You can just grab the loop right here and lift and you can still get access to all that down there, but it is to make it a little bit stiffer to get it in and out of there, but it's, it's really no big deal. Like I mentioned earlier, it does have the ledges, but it's not as high as the ones inside and rightfully so, it doesn't really need it. You're not gonna be getting a lot of water in here except for one problem that these Model 3s have. When you have a lot of rain that happens and pours down on your car, watch where the water goes. Straight down into your trunk. Take a look at this, there's barely any lip there, hardly any whatsoever. So when that water comes flying over there, it just has nowhere to go but straight into your trunk. So, I mean, this is obviously only a problem if you're like coming out to your car with a bag full of groceries, it's pouring down rain, and the water just goes off the slide of your back window right into your trunk. Obviously, driving this doesn't matter. It's just when you open the trunk, when it's pouring down rain like it does a lot here in Seattle, that this is actually a really big deal. Okay guys, so over the last 5,000 miles, those are the accessories that have been on my car. They've done very well, they've protected my car very, very well. And I would love to hear from you guys if you have some other accessories that I did not name and how well you like those and why you recommend them. I do recommend getting some accessories for your car. You spent a lot of money on this car and there are certain parts of it that you really should protect, like that center console. Keep your eyes out for my 5,000 mile review coming up on the car here in the next probably week or so. Until next time guys, I'll see you on the next one. Well, you made it through another one of my videos. Congratulations. If you're already a subscriber to my channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. If you're not a subscriber yet and you like my stuff, just go right down there about an inch, click that subscribe button for me. And very important, don't forget to click the little notification bell so when I post a video, you'll know about it. Now, last thing, if you like this video, please just take a second and hit that thumbs up button for me, or I guess they call it a like button. It actually really helps me out here with YouTube. Okay guys, I won't take up any more of your time. Thanks again, see you on the next one.